because uh, I don't want to miss any of this stuff. Briggsy, before we start, mate, we've got to, we've got to uh, show you Eject the him. Eject him. I'm used to that, Liam. <laughs> I'm used to that, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Dicko, where's the fire exit? Here, here, and behind Briggsy's that shirt behind him. <laughs> wow, that, that, that was my debut shirt in the championship. That Liam. Oh, was it, mate? I, I, yeah, I played there well, as well, pal. I played there as well, mate. <laughs> I think, think I was there longer than you, though. I think you was, mate, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Br- Briggsy, this is the way that we introduce every podcast Thursday, as I'm sure you're aware, in the avid fan right. that you are. Podcast Thursdays! Oi, oi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down with it. <laughs> mate, you nailed it, first time, first time. Can I say, lads, before we start, look at this. I've even brought it all the way to London, all in the name of content. The cast. That was uh, oh, requested signed. Bet that by... stinks, mate. Yeah, it's not. It's not pleasant. <laughs> um, we got it. <laughs> we so there's some signatures on there. I was going to get Ricky Hatton to sign it as well, but I, I, did it was, I did figure if there was anyone likely to draw a cock on it, it was definitely going to be Ricky. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, uh, I did. Sorry if you're watching, mate, but I had to swear with Ricky. But we've got a few on there. So the, the fans that were asking for this to be auctioned off for a Danny Begara statue, uh, get in touch with liam.dickinson at hotmail.com. We might get his big toe. We might, be, we might have enough for his big toe. <laughs> uh, and drop him in. Um, listen, it's Stockport County Live. Liam Dickinson, Matty May, where I managed to be a special guest tonight. Keith Briggs. Briggs Ex-teammate, stroke gaffer. Yeah, those were the days, eh, Liam? <laughs> what, trying to get you relegated? <laughs> we had some we had some fun and games then, mate. Jesus. Oh, my God. Which time? Which time? Playing playing or, or, or managing? What, with you? Both. <laughs> Still having nightmares about it. It took me under his wing, I remember. Do you know what? I'll tell you what. I remember one time. This this will now. This, this, I'll always remember it. And uh, I was getting some grief. I think it was off Gannon. I think Gannon was giving me a right load of grief. It was the first year I'd signed. Um, young, young lad, I was only 19 years old, and Gannon being how he is, he just he doesn't give a he doesn't give a toss, and he was ha- hammering me, he was laying into me, my head was going, the confidence was going, and Keith Briggs just turned around and went, "Fucking get off his case, <laughs> fucking leave the poor kid alone." And I'll never, rem- I, I'll never forget that, mate. Uh listen, it was, it was, uh, it was my pleasure. You know, at the end of the day, mate, he was a young lad, wet behind the ears, just coming in. First pro club, really, weren't it? That yeah, you've been was, yeah. involved in. So, you know, it was obviously it was a tough sort of uh, it was tough so time for you yeah, coming was, in. Getting it was. Used it was hard. It was. I was getting used to being a professional full-time football or full time game. You know, it's different than play train on Tuesday and Thursday night at Mosley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you know, I just thought I thought I'd give you a little bit of a. <laughs> and then, funnily enough, funnily enough, after that, me and me and Gavin got on like a house on fire, and, and Briggsy and Gavin didn't. So yeah, I was, was on the, I was on the transfer. <laughs> I was on the transfer list the week after. You got to move to you got to move to Derby <laughs> six months later. I'll, I'll cheers to that. <laughs> cheers, mate. Do you know what, lads? My internet cut out at the worst time. Then, so I heard. Do you know what happened? And then I heard, and he was on the transfer list, and I was getting. Oh, it's all right. You'll get it on live. You'll, you'll get it when you watch it back. <laughs> um. Briggsy, before we go into county and all this, just can you give us a, an oversight? What were these two lads like in the dressing room? What, what were they like to work with? Yeah, two cracking lads first and foremost. Um, you know, they were they, they, they were a pleasure to play football with. The, there were two young lads coming through. I was sort of classed as one of the senior lads um, at the time, even though I was still probably quite young myself. But they were, you know, breath of fresh air. They come in, they were... They were fearless, really. They they, they, they they took it in the stride, the expectations of the club, and um, and what they brought was 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 class and, and and talent, really. So they got thrown in at the deep end in a in a probably tricky period of the club, and yeah, they just they just took it on the chin and, and got on with it, and and they've both gone on to have really good careers, and you know I follow it from afar, really. Um, obviously, Matty's done and, and gone on to do other things. Liam's some sort of like global entertainer in the football <laughs> podcast world now. So I keep following from afar, mate. But he's he's, uh, yeah, he's got his own headset. But he's, um, no, they were a pleasure to play football with. And um, first and foremost, just fantastic teammates. So 
um, yeah, it was good. Matty, let me um, let me ask you, mate. Obviously, if you were the youngster coming through, Briggs is playing in a similar role to yourself in that midfield area. What was he like to learn from? It was class. It was classy. I mean, like he says, they're still young, youngish in football, and and uh, but very experienced. Um, a great all-round player, you know, covers every blade, blade of grass. Just a top, a top model professional. And I think I really got to know that that side of him as well at Staley Bridge playing under him. Um, what he expected from the lads. Um, I think there was even a game where I think we were down on numbers and you joined in, didn't you, Briggs? And, and to be perfectly honest, in my opinion, you've shown, you've shown the rest of the lads up for... Did you, get, did you get sent off that game? <laughs> Not sent off, but, but we were getting beat. <laughs> I don't think you ever lose that that winning mentality. He, he just thought in training. He used to he used to hate playing he, when he joined it in training. It was just a nightmare, just ratting round you, kicking you, leaving it on you, and you just it's like he he still trained at fifty seven how he played when he was twenty one. The problem is the reason why I got sent off was because I couldn't get there anymore. <laughs> in my head, I think I could get there. I think for the first couple of months of me being at County, I genuinely. Didn't know what position Keith Briggs played because he'd played left wing, right yeah. wing, centre mid, right back. He just so, he was just that versatile. He played all over. Yeah, mainly substitute. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, yeah. Do you not fancy throwing your hat in for the uh, for the job? Whose job? A, a county. Did you not? Did you not no, fancy it? No. No, I don't think so. I think the you know the uh, the club is by far bigger than my expectations at the moment. It's um, you know, I think at this moment in time, they've gone with the right man, with Dave. Um, you know, they've, they've got unbelievable backing at this moment in time. So, you know, I think what they needed was somebody to, who was experienced at the level to, to get them out of this situation that they're in. And, um, you know, I think with, with Dave coming in, I think it's a, a really great appointment, to be honest. How, how, how difficult is it being a manager? Because obviously you see in both sides and, you, you know, how much more do you respect managers after you've been one? Wow, mate. It was like um, a real baptism of fire because I kind of got thrown into the situation. I was still playing at the time and um, I don't even know how I ended up getting the job, Matt uh, and, and Liam. Do you know what I mean? It was like I, I was in that transition of, of playing and, and thinking of what's going to happen next. I was, I was getting a lot older. I, was, I think I was still only 33, 34 at the time, but yeah. you know when it's time to... To, to hang your boots up and it was that yeah. it was it, it was that time mate and I think um the, the opportunity come to, to go in at Staley Bridge as sort of as a as a player player manager player coach um and and I jumped at it um but little did I know what what the experience was gonna be like because it was it was really intense. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's constant twenty four hours a day thinking about what are you going to do? How are you going to help these young players that we was working with? Um, dealing with board members, dealing with supporters, dealing with different characters like yourself. And then, um, you know, just really trying to juggle everything at the at the same time. And yeah, uh, learned so much. Really yeah. did learn yeah. so much. And I think in the future, it'll only me, hold me in good stead with regards to what I'm doing now with my coaching and the experience that I, I went through. Um, you know, it's it's been a good, a really good learning curve for me. Yeah, I suppose when when you're playing, to a certain extent, when you leave a training ground, you can just switch off. Whereas when you when you're managing, and I remember, um, I remember speaking to Hazel, Jim's wife, and and she said literally, he he, he doesn't t- switch off after training. He goes home. He's got the VCR on. He's recording games. He's watching every single game, whether it's Italian league, Spanish league, league. National League is just constantly watching and and recording. You remember the the um, the, the, the DVDs and the Thursday yeah. and Friday and his clips, and yeah. it was it was you know the, the pros and cons of the, of the team we're playing, how we've played, what we've done wrong, and it was just you don't see that behind the scenes that managers do. And like I say, you being a manager and becoming the manager, you, it must have been a massive wake up call to you. Yeah, I think I think as well like the the. the you have to be so thorough nowadays with regards to everything because there's so much sort of footage out there the way you can go and get that little fine yard, that little inch that might give you an edge over your opposition. So if you're looking at set pieces or whatever it is, 
that might be the difference between winning and losing. Um, and it's vital. And obviously, the, the further up the pyramid that you go, the more help you get with that, with analysts and stuff like that. But it's a it's a massive part of the game. Um, but it, I mean, it, it's not just that side of things as well. You're dealing with 20 different characters. You're dealing with diff, you know, different. Every player is different. They've, they've, they've all got their own issues. You're trying to keep everybody happy. You're trying to you're trying to think about what's best with regards to the training. Um, you know, there's all sorts of scenarios that happen when as as a coach and as a manager that you've got to that you've got to go through and it's about finding that balance um you know as soon as i remember i always remember mate it didn't happen very often at Staley bridge when we won a game you could switch off for that hour you had a beer do you know what i mean and you had that release and you had that little euphoria but then straight after that bang you're right back at it ready for yeah. the next game you're back in yeah. training on the monday or the tuesday trying to prepare for the next game yeah um, I, think, I, think, um, I think you've sorry to cut you off mate i think you've got You've got a boss to answer to as well, haven't you, as a manager? So, you know, in terms of in terms of finances, yeah. so you, you've been pulled from both sides. You've got lads who want certain deals, you want certain players, but then you've got to answer to it. But it's very very stressful job, uh, job I imagine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the the level that I work with as well, it, you are dealing with a budget, and then you know, I was lucky that I could tap into my my friends and and the people that I'd come close to during my playing career with the likes of you Liam and you Matty when I brought you both in it was a godsend for me because you had that you had that experience you had that that quality that sort of level above that kept us afloat do you know what I mean it was like yeah. we, we brought in a lot of young lads who had come just out of come out of youth football under 18s yeah. football that we tried to try to bring in and and then with the likes of you and I think um we had a couple of other experienced lads who we also tried to bring in just to find that balance, um, yeah. Yeah. which was massive. And and even though that we, I mean, we didn't pull up any trees uh, with regards pushing on for promotion and stuff like that. I believe that us staying up in the division, the Conference North at the time, when there were some massive clubs, massive it's clubs. A big, it's a big accomplishment. Yeah, it was an accomplishment that we stayed up. Um, you know, and, and and you all played your part and. I love I love my time there. I love my my time being in that dressing room, and I, I miss that ba the banter and the three points on the line. And um, you know, I do really miss that environment. But you know, it's uh, you know maybe I'll do it again one one day. I'm not so, I'm not so sure what's going to happen in the future. But yeah, I loved every minute. Of it, but it's it is it's really really intense. Yeah, I, I still remember my conversation with you uh, <laughs> telling you I was leaving for professional boxing. <laughs> I remember every detail. He looked, he looked at me as if to say you've made about five tackles in seven years as a pro <laughs> in football. <laughs> I just looked at you and I think you're too pretty to go into boxing, mate. What's, go, what's going off? You're going to get a broken nose. Your lips yeah. are going to be all over the place. Oh, I, was I was limping when I told you. I remember it. I think, I think so. I think so. Um, <laughs> Harry, that was a Harrogate after the Harrogate game, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. smashed me knee on that pole. When you slide, yeah, when you slide tackle the wall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Worse. Yeah, I remember, yeah, I rem I remember it, Matt. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, mate, because, you know, obviously he was a, a major part of the, the team and the, the success that we'd have with winning the games that we had, you was a big part of it. And to, for us to lose you so early, um, that little bit, of that, that quality and the experience that you brought to the team was massive for me. But like I said, you you, you were your own man. You, you, you had your own ambitions and... Um, I would never stand in your way to go on and you pursue what you what would make you happy and you know I think I come and watch your I don't know if I watch your debut or I come and watch your second fight and I was as proud as you then as I was when you were playing making your debut at Stockport and and playing for me at Staley Bridge so um, you know it's a credit to you and that's the type of guy you are really do you know what I mean you whatever you put your mind to you more often than not successful so do you know what mate I really appreciate that and it wasn't it wasn't an easy conversation to have you because. For the first time in a good few years, I was very happy playing under you. Yeah. I was very, I was very happy. I was very happy with the way you've done things with Sully and Fernie and, and obviously Liam, Kingy, Charlie, yeah. all the good lads around us. Um, but I'd been doing bits and bobs with Matthew Hatton and then we had a chat about turning pro and he thought I could go far and, and my heart was in box. And at the time, I thought, with the small budget we had, I was taking up some of it and I thought, it isn't fair if my heart's not in it, you know, and I thought, I'm just going to take the plunge now and because I knew we, we we had troubles, didn't we? Money wise, it wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't perfect at that level. No. So 
every 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 penny counts. So I just thought it's, it's the best thing to do, you know, rather than be half hearted. But as I say, that that's no word of a lie. I was very happy for the first time in two or three, yeah. maybe four years. Uh, I think you'd had a little bit. You'd had a little bit of an up and down sort of period because you'd had a few injuries and injuries, you, yeah. you kind of fall not fallen out of love with the game because you was obsessed with the game. But you'd had a you'd had a down period where you were trying to do it. I don't know. You know, mentally, I don't know if it had affected you with the 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 injuries and stuff like that. But you know, I just wanted you to come in and enjoy your football, and that's exactly what I said to said to Liam. Yeah. You know, just come in and help me out, enjoy your football again. I remember, I, remember, I remember the uh, the phone call off you. Obviously, I've been at, I've been at uh, County and it didn't work out under Lordy. For one reason or another, you know, I wasn't a player who who he was used to coaching. Uh, he, you know, he's always used to coaching young lads and it weren't really working. I was getting frustrated because I wasn't getting enough game time and I wasn't scoring goals. And I remember um, Lordy called me and um, you know we, we we ended up calling it a day. I think it was a couple of days later. Uh, Briggsy phoned me and just said, you know. Um, I need you. Can you come down and help me out? I can't give you. I can't give you a load of money, but I can guarantee you football. I said that's all I want. I wanted to play, and yeah. I, again, we talk about mentally. I was in a bit of a bit of a bad place where I was thinking, is this it now? Is my career over? I, I, I can't. I can't get back in the county. It's it been a bit of a failure going back. And it just. It just made me really enjoy my football again, and the laugh and the banter in the changing rooms, fighting for your three points, and. Yeah. I don't think I've ever enjoyed a relegation battle before like that. <laughs> you know, I didn't like... fucking enjoy it, Nico. I didn't enjoy it, mate. <laughs> you know what it was? It was. Uh, I think we had the characters in the change rooms and the quality to not roll over and die, and we didn't. Yeah. And like you say, it was such an achievement staying up with the budget we had. I mean, yeah. I remember. I think it was after you'd left. It was after. Yeah, it was definitely after you'd left, and we played Altrincham away, top of the league, beat them one 0 I scored the winner. Yeah, got um, got a shout after the game. You know, can you can you come in? Here? A couple of players, you know, could have a quick chat with you after the game. I was like, fucking hell, give me a two-year here. Eh? Gonna, gonna yeah. give me some more money. I got released after the game. I just scored the winner against Top of League. Yeah, because because <laughs> financially, these lo- these these smaller clubs, you know, they, they rely on the fans, they rely on people, yeah. you know. You know, I mean, at one point when it happened, uh, Mary said to me, you know, absolutely no chance. Yeah. No, absolutely no chance is are we are we getting rid of Dicko? I'll I'll yeah. pay his wages. And she yeah. she contributed to my wages for the rest of the season. Yeah. And that's that's what you need in, in these lower clubs. This this whole fortune to have people like that. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I tried to create there. You know, it was like we we had nothing. You know, yeah. you know, and at the end of the day, I think I ended up managing to get us at, at Stockport Sports Village. So we had a, a really good training facility. Yeah. I, you know, I brought the types of Mary in who who would support the club in any way that she would. Yeah. Um, and. I think, like I said, you just tap into your connections, you tap into people that you know and you trust and you believe in and, and hopefully try and, you know, you might get a touch, you might you might start picking some results up and try to build the momentum and try and create something. Um, it's, yeah, it was it was very frustrating at the same time and, you yeah. know, because your, the old ambition that you have as a man and as a person, you you think that it's your it's your chance and it's your opportunity to go and show what you can do and what you're all about. Um, to, at times, you thought you know your hands were tied and there was only a certain ceiling that you could get to before the trapdoor fucking sends you back down again. So yeah, it was it, as as much like I said, mate. As much as it was really enjoyable and it was it, it educated me as a coach and a person, it was also frustrating and. Um, but like I said, I think when I, I always remember speaking to you, Dicko, and I said, "There's still one more move left in you, mate." I think you got you one. I think you got you one, didn't I? Yeah. I think that was. Uh, I think Guys, you went like, that, yeah, exactly. And you went there when you were successful. You got promoted. So yeah, I remember the call, the call, and he was like, he, "You said to me, you know, I think you should go." But Gazi yeah. coming for you. I was like, "All right." He went, "I think you should go." I was like, "You want to get rid of me?" He's like, "You know, yeah. you know, it's it's a good opportunity. They were top of the league at the time." Um, yeah. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, you know, he's right. It's one more chance to to have a bit of success. And, and I thought I, I got I got success. There. I didn't thoroughly enjoy myself there, but you know, yeah. um, we did the job and we got promoted to beat Charlie uh, in the final. Nick's a little Nick's a playoff final goal shock. And exactly. um, <laughs> and yeah, exactly, and, then, exactly. and then two seasons later, I was back at back at County. I love yeah. it. Uh, back at um, Stanley Bridge. Sorry, enjoying my football again. Yeah. The thing is, as well, Liam, at the time, Stockport weren't, they were in the same division as us at one yeah. point. I remember playing, us at, playing them at Staley Bridge and then 
I played them at Edgeley Park. So, and you know, the, the drop that you was making weren't that big at that time. No, you know, because no. you came from county. So, I, yeah. And, and I, I didn't think when I rang you, I didn't think I had a chance in hell to sign you because I thought you would have had someone else lined up. No, if whatever. it was someone else, if it was someone else, I probably there'd, there'd been a, a good chance that I wouldn't have. But it's because yeah. of the person who phoned me. It was the first, the, the person on the end of the line. If it was someone else, it could have been, a, it could have been a no. But I knew. Yeah. The, your your work ethic, the, the kind of person you are, and I knew I'd be playing games under you, and I'd want to win for you. Brilliant. So yeah, it was a no brainer for me. Top man. I want to, um, if we can, let let's, let's speak about the new appointment at County, just because we you've given us a good insight there into what it was like to manage it, and I didn't want to interrupt because <clears throat> they, although it, the stories weren't exclusive to County, they were an insight of that manager-player relationship and what managers have to go through in terms of analysing games, like you said yourself, Briggsy. Even after a win, you only get at best an hour <laughs> before you're back at the drawing board and, you, and you, you know, you're know, going over what you've seen. Um, in the last couple of years, we've seen two very, very different kinds of manager uh, at County under Jim and under Simon Russ. You know Dave Challoner as a player. You've seen him since go on as a manager. We, uh, as, as a manager, we had Andy Welsh on the other day, just on a, a quick chat the other morning, and he said he, Dave Challoner's first job is to make County hard to beat, and he said he'll do that because in the dressing room he's a leader. That's what he's like in there. What 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 were your experiences? I know you're probably going back a few years now. But what were your experiences or or memories of Dave Challoner in the dressing room at Edgeley Park? Um, I think first and foremost, he was a top, top guy. So he, he come in, he didn't have any hairs and graces. He just got on with his job, um, fitted into the changing room really, really well. Um, he was very honest. Um, he was very demanding, even as a player. He set standards for himself and his teammates. Um, and I think he did go on to, to be captain of the club at the time. So I think we was in the championship of that, having a, having a really difficult period. Um, but he, he still demanded them standards. He still demanded that sort of um, enthusiasm from, from each and every teammate that he was playing with. And I think he's done the same as a manager. Um, he's very well organised. He brings structure to, to whatever team he works with. Um, you know, he's, I think he's very demanding. So he, ex he expects players to do what he says. And if they don't, then there's... It can be ruthless at times, and I think that's shone in, in, in the way that he's won trophies, he's won promotions, um, and he's been successful wherever he's been at. I think he's had five promotions and one FA Trophy win, so he's not he's not short in the in the you know the the winning mentality and the the the, the demanding of we've got to we've got to do something here, we've got to win games. I think I think familiarity, uh, especially in name. Goes a long way in football. It's not just a county. County have this uh, aff affiliation with Jim, with the fans, because because they knew him as a player, and then you know, this affinity. And he's not the only one that that's happened with. Obviously, Peter Ward through the years came back, and but it happens at every club. Look at Man United with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's, he's got this extra breathing room, if you like, because he's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Frank Lampard at Chelsea, uh, Arteta at Arsenal. There's there's loads of examples. Um, Dave Challen has got that familiar. He's got that affinity. Okay, he wasn't a a legend player, if you like, he didn't spend 15 years there and win it all. But you know, he, he the fans know him, and then they know what he's done um, as a manager as well. So, so there is confidence in there, which was no disrespect to Simon. Neither of those two boxes were ticked. We didn't know what he was about as a manager, and we didn't know him previously. He, he kind of come in from nowhere. Matt, I'm going to give, I'm going to, I want to give you the first question, the, the, the first chance to answer this next question. So I asked it Andy Wells for the day. If you're Dave Challenon now going into the dressing room at Stockport, what's the first thing you've got to fix? If you want to make them hard to beat, that's great. How do you do that? I think you need to... I think characters in football are massive. So he's got to figure out quickly who the characters are and have them on the pitch. And I think he's bang on in, in making it a team hard to beat. I've said it from day one since I started doing these podcasts. I think if you, if you, if you nail the back four and the goalkeeper... Be solid in the middle of the pack and let the other front four do what they do. You know, you're halfway there. Um, 
he's going to have to figure out the characters, who, who's about what. We, we saw glimpses of it on uh, Saturday, albeit against bottom of the league, but doesn't matter. Job's a job. We've, we've done it. Um, and now I think he's, as we said before, he's going to get he's going to get people lifting the game five and ten percent more now to get in his side because he's the new guy. Um, so it's a case of it's a case of being solid and building his backbones and, and building his spine of his team really, and figuring out and, and, and healthy competition between players as well and working out who, you know who's appropriate, who, who's in form, and who, who can mix it when it gets tough. Dicko, if you're if you're a if you're a striker and a new manager comes in and a new manager has come in because you've not been winning games and listen, as all of you on this on this call know, every player has to play a part in a, you know in, in getting that win, be it the defenders doing the job at the back or the guys up front doing their job. Yeah. But if you're a striker and we've not been scoring loads of goals and we've not been winning all the games, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and a new manager comes in. What's what's your immediate reaction? Like Matthew says, you have to put an extra five or ten percent. Well, I know that he's he's not coming to the club unaware of what's been going on. So I know he's not. He knows that I've not been in the back of the net. So now I, I need to impress. I need to work hard. I, I need to up my tempo, like you say, an extra five, ten, fifteen percent. That can be that can be a lot of pressure on a player. Um, so he's got to do it in a in a way where. The player, he's got to manage the player right and manage the squad right, where he doesn't want to be worrying about players not performing and, and, and struggling under pressure. I think for me, the difference between Simon and and um, and uh, Dave and that's yeah, gone. Simon, Dave. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, <Medwin there. laughs> Sorry, the difference with Simon and Dave is obviously Simon's come from down south. Um, you know, uh, working with the likes of Brighton, young lads there. It's a total different environment. Yeah, Dave's done it at this level. He's he's, he's got connections at this level. He's he's been at Fylde. He's, he knows all the local teams. He, he's got that, like we were talking about before with Briggsy. He's got that 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 connection to be able to phone players who knows they can do it at this level. Uh, and and players who've gone on from this level, he's managed some fantastic players. And and just by being the person he is, and 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 people knowing who he is and what he's about, attracts players to the club that he'll have that attraction that Simon didn't have um so I'm 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 really really positive about this this uh about this move so yeah I'm fingers crossed it, it works out but I can't see it not but as, going back to the question about the strikers I, I feel like the, the the lads will know that before he came in they've not been performing to to the best of their ability so they should be wanting to do that anyway yeah now I think I think I think I agree. I, I'm genuinely quite excited about this because <laughs> everyone knows I'm a big gym fan. You know, there's, there's, there's no denying that. However, even if it, you know, even if they had gone to gym at this moment, I don't think it would have been right. This squad is now so far from a gym squad. He would have he, he would have a lot of work on it. Whereas it probably is more suited to a day challenge. You know. Someone who's worked with big budgets before and those has seen big players come in. Like you say, he'll know some of those players as well. And what I do like is he's got this element of fair play in his in his, in his repertoire, which Jim always leaned on. So there are going to be familiarities there, but he's got that experience, like you say, Dicko. He's done this before. He knows <clears throat> he knows how to put a stamp on a team. I got the impression Simon Rush didn't know how to make a team his own quickly. Yeah. Uh, I took, to you in this one, Briggs, because you, you're the guy who's been a manager. Just how easy is it to make a team your own when when you take the, the realm of when you take the position of manager? How do you do that? I think uh, I think you've got to you've got to put your stamp on things, and you've got to put your sort of your own your own belief into into that team. First and foremost, you've got to sign good players. You've got to. Have, got to get the players to buy into the way that you want to play um, you've got to get them first and foremost working as hard as possible for you you know they've got it they've got to show they've got to show that they've got to die for the club I think that's what was missing a little bit I think they've got to I think these players have got to to buy in what this football club's all about there's, there's a connection with the supporters at Edgley Park that you're not going to get at, at most clubs um, the players have got to buy into that and, and expect that every time they go out and enter the park, that they've got to play to a certain standard. Uh, they've got to entertain. Um, 
But first and foremost, they've got to work their absolute knackers off. You know, they might not win every game, but they've got to play for the manager and they've got to work as hard as possible to make sure that they're successful. Um, and if the, if the county fans see that players work hard, then you've got half a chance. Um, so I, I, think, I, I really do believe that Dave will, that will be the first thing they'll try and install into the players. Just get them grafted, get them working together collectively and as a team in their units and play to the way that, you know, whatever his philosophy is, whatever he goes out and, and, and implements in training, that they, that, that they, they do it as, as best as they possibly can. And, and like I said, if they, they build that sort of connection with the supporters, they'll back, they'll back the lads, they'll back the players. Um, and that's a, mass, that's a massive start to, to being successful, I believe. Let, let me ask, let me ask, how difficult do you think the last... OK, so it's Wednesday evening now. By the way, podcast Wednesday, if not Thursdays. Um, <laughs> Wednesday evening now, it, 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 it's been a, a roughly 24 hours since, since he was announced. <clears throat> so how, how do you think the last 48 hours have been for Dave? Because it must have made it so much harder when people like Jeff Stelling are tweeting going, nah, it's not going to happen. He wants to stay at Hartlepool. And you've then got the chairman going to BBC Teaside or whatever it was, saying, no, we've rejected their approach. You know, there's a game going on there. And he, ultimately, is the guy facing the brunt of it. Because if then, for whatever reason, the counting doesn't come off, he's been made to look like money chasing whatever. When really, it might be not, I'm sure money played a part, but it's, it's clearly not the only motivation. So how do you think the last 48 hours have been for it? It must have been a bit of a roller coaster. I think I think if if the club wants Dave and Dave wants stop for, then it's very difficult for Hartlepool to say no. Um, even though that he was very successful there, he built this he built this sort of um, the way that he was with the supporters at Hartlepool apparently was really, really good. He has a really good relationship with supporters up there. But I think Dave wanted the move. Um, and I think Stockport wanted Dave. So if, if if that was the situation, then it's very difficult for it not to happen. Um, so yeah, I don't know what you think, Liam. I think that's it, it's very it's very uh, hard. Uh, for you, as, a pl- as a player or a manager, or you know, obviously I can't go for manager, but as a player, if you want the move, the club wants you. If your if your heart's made, and mind is made up, then there's not much stopping you. It, it, that's where it concerned nasty and Hartlepool wouldn't all like that. You know they've they've got a lot of respect for him. The fans have got a lot of respect for him. You know, and as a manager and as a club, you want you want the best for for someone who's you know who's worked hard for you. Um, so I, I feel like you know they, they wanted him to stay, but they, deep down, you know they'll 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 want him to be happy and they'll want him to, you know, to, to further his career in, in in the way he chooses. What do you reckon, Matty? Did you see all the, the goings on on social media while it was being rumoured? Yeah, and I agree with both of them what they're saying, but I also think I reckon there's a good chance he'll have clocked a little, he'll have clocked that it could be a gemmy. You know, everybody knows we're a sleeping giant, um, and it's just going to take that that the right little bit of luck and the right sort of, you know, manager and, and the right people to take it back where it belongs. And I think, how's, how can you turn that down? He could be an absolute hero. Exactly. He could be an absolute, he's got, he's got, he's got, the, he's got the chance to be an absolute hero at County. And he's got a yeah. good chance of it as well. Not, yeah. not just a chance, he's got a good chance, especially with the backing we've got. So I think he probably clocked, you know, I can't really knock this back at the moment. Whoever, there's, a lot of pressure, there's a lot of pressure on him as well, by yeah. the way. A yeah. lot of pressure to be successful. And he'll know that, Dave, you know, because there's not many teams that are going to get the backing that Dave's going to get. You know, even with a squad that's there in place now, he's going to, you know, he's, he's got to expect promotion still this season. Yeah. Let, let, me do, let me do a little bit of a round table. And I don't mean any disrespect to Simon Rusk or his team uh, in, in asking this question. But I'm going to answer first and I'm going to say yes, 100%. Go, I'll start with you, Keith, and I'll just go around. Just a very simple, do you feel more confident about County getting promoted with Dave Challen and now at the wheel? Yes. Um, Matty and Deco? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's, that's no disrespect at all. It's just the, just the freshness of it. I just feel I just feel the experience he's got in this league, and and the lower leagues, and and the and the personnel he knows, and 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 personnel he can bring in, 
uh, he, he knows this league like the back, you know, like the back of his hand. Um, so yeah, for me, it's it's the it's the, you can't beat experience. Yeah, even if he, you know, even if he didn't bring anybody in, I'm sure he will sign his own men. And you know, I think you can always tell a lot on a manager's first signing because he usually, you know, he'll tend to turn to players he knows, uh, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think um, even if he didn't sign anybody, the caliber of player we've got in that squad is so good. With a manager of the experience of Dave, I expect him. You know, he'll be able to get a tune out of these. Just game uh, management at this level, like you know, how you look back, you, you probably got to think about how many times filed, hung on to a one 0 win, you know, because of the tactics he's put in place. He knows how to win games at, at this level, and that's exactly what County need. Because because we're not in we're not in the championship we're not in League One we're in the National League and we need someone to get us out of the National League and I don't I can't really think of anyone better to do it than than Dave to be honest. Which he's done he did it last season with Hartlepool. Yeah. So he's got that experience he's got you know he'll want to feel that again and yeah. he won't he won't come here thinking that he can't. Yeah. So you know yeah I think he's a he's a perfect sort of. Uh, relationship with the club at this moment in time. I think he's the perfect person to get him out of this division, and then um, and then build something. Yeah. And if he can reignite some momentum, I think that's all it really is. Momentum. Remember your run, Keith, at um, uh, Kiddie. Yeah. How many, games, how many games did you go and beat? Just through. I know you had a good, you had a really good side, but momentum just. Yeah. We lost feel around the squad. You know. We lost our first five games. Um, and the manager was under massive pressure and then we drew the next five so we didn't win in our first 10 and then we went on un unbeaten in 26 yeah I thought, and we I finished thought, i thought it's 29 but yeah 26 yeah 29 it might be 20 it might have been yeah. 29 matty i just yeah. i just remember i think we missed out on still we missed out of, missed out to mansfield on the last day from yeah. promotion <laughs> as yeah. champions so yeah yeah if, if he listen if he gets them players ticking if he gets yeah. them organized and he gets Edgley Park bouncing. I'm, I'm telling you, momentum and confidence it's be, it's is a funny, be a place to go. a funny thing. It could be a really good, good, good six months, you know, for the rest of the season. But what he's got to do is first and foremost is just build that momentum, get that first win as soon as possible, yeah, and then just build on it. Definitely. By the way, one, one, one final thing on this, because I cannot believe. I mean, to be fair, it's been overshadowed by the, the whole managerial situation. We've not even mentioned his first game happens to be Bolton away. Like, Quite what a game. Start off with an easy one. With all due respect to any other club in the league, this is not, you know, I, I don't know, this is not, uh, I can't think of any of the, the, the down south teams now, but do you know what I mean? This is not Dover at home or something. This is, this is a massive, even if he wasn't here, this would be a memorable occasion. 5,000 tickets sold. You guarantee yeah. more people are going to go down than have got tickets. This is a huge game. Imagine he's going to walk out because Bolton, with all due respect, might, it might not be the biggest game in the world to them. They've got their own things going on. County are going to take over the Reebok Stadium. I know it's not called the Reebok anymore, but it's it's the Reebok. It is. Yeah. But the University of Bolton Stadium is it? The University of Reebok Stadium. Middlebrook. Um, <laughs> um, Middlebrook. He's he's gonna walk out to five thousand odd people singing his name, clapping, blah blah blah. He's gonna feel ten feet tall. Yeah. What a game to take over your first you know, your first your first day in the new job, so to speak. Just how good how, how, how good do you think he's feeling when we beat him? <laughs> it's a win win, it's a win win game to come into it for me. Yeah. yeah. Under underdogs, underdogs and if and if he wins he's a hero straight away. You know, it's, it's what 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 opportunity it is for him. Someone said to me on Twitter, by the way, imagine if Sarkovic scores a winner and kisses yeah. the badge. Yeah, Woo -hoo -hoo. fantastic. <laughs> the, right, the writing's on the wall. It's written in the stars, isn't it? <laughs> That's um, it, is Keith. Yeah. Quick, quick question then. That's like, how do you see us going this weekend? Get a new manager bounce, five thousand fans away. We were saying with Briggsy just before you lads joined, I think I think outside of Wembley, this might even eclipse the number of fans we took to Main Road back in the day when Tony Dinning got the winner. Um, huge, Big huge dindo. Wins. Big dindo. With that penalty, it's naughty. But, um, you know, if, um, if, if with all that going into play, 
surely, surely it's only, I don't want to tempt anything, but surely it's that we can only see a county win. Nobody wants to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> only time will tell. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a free hit for him, really. I think, like, either way, if he goes on to win the game, brilliant. You know, it, I think he's got the I think he's got the players capable of winning, um, no doubt about that. But you know, if 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 he, if he doesn't win, then then so what? I mean, the, the the main priority for Dave is to get promoted this year. You know what I mean? It it can go in there. It'll be a really good atmosphere. Um, he'll enjoy the occasion playing at a, you know in a big stadium. But um, it won't be the be all and end all for Dave. What's the most important is that he gets promoted this year, or yeah. you know, he builds something to 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 go into to next season and making sure that in the next couple of seasons that they're promoted into the football league. That's that's got to be his ambition. Yeah. Um, so just enjoy the occasion, and, and I'm sure the players will. But it's got Sarsovic written all over it to win, <laughs> to, to get score the winner, and it definitely has. It has. Enjoy, enjoy, the, enjoy the occasion and enjoy the reception as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, milk it. Yeah. I definitely, may definitely milk it. I, honestly, I think I'd be like Ron Burgundy, you know, the Anchorman guy walking out there. I'd be, I'd be all over that. If, if, I don't think I'm ever going to. Yeah, I'm a big deal, you know. Um, before <laughs> we start wrapping things up, uh, Briggsy, I've got to ask, can we have a little guided tour of the shirts on the wall behind you there? <laughs> It won't, um, it, won't, it won't take long. No, it won't take long. <laughs> you can see it. You can see it already. You can see it there. So, so I think that one was my debut against Oldham. One minute. I think that one was when I scored my first goal. Can't remember. Um, when I with Fleetwood shirt when I got promoted from the champ uh, from the conference. Norwich, Norwich. Uh, yeah, got promoted from the Championship to Premier League. Can't did, remember. Did you get rid of you after that? Got rid of me after that, I think. <laughs> that, that's from that's from Matty. Rocky. Uh, right, Matty Balboa. Yeah, something like that. Championship winning medal. So there's a, there's a little bit. I weren't always shit, you know. All <laughs> <laughs> real, mate. Some great Top memories four. there. Yeah, I listen. I. I I always remember making my debut at, uh, at Stockport as a 17-year-old. You know what I mean? And, and and we had some unbelievable talent in that in that group. You know, we had some big hitters. Um, and when I broke through, it was it was it was one of the best feelings, and you know that I could ever ever imagine. And, and you know, we were playing. Some, no, exactly. And we were. We, I mean, I think we finished seventh in the in the championship that season that I made my debut. So. Um, one young player of the year. The next season, I won player of the year. So, even though like my time was quite not short lived, but I only, you know, I, it, it was what it was. But I had some really good times there as yeah. a player, um, and I was I was quite successful. So, even though the second period weren't quite as good as the first, um, you know, I still love the club. It was, it's still a big part of my life, and yeah. I, I wish them every success moving forward. And that. that, that you know that's what it's all about. Yeah. So it's a really good family club. And they, you know, I was there last. I was there a couple of weeks ago for the Wrexham game and um, met all the all the faces, Steve Bellis and John Kieran and all the all the all the people that are still there and they're still as friendly as ever. So, um, so yeah, really, really good, good club. Who's the best player you played with? Played with? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was a few, there were so many. There were so many. I think. I think if you look at that first group of players from '98 to 2002, I think I left. You've got the likes of Tony Dinning, Chris Marsden, Sean Connolly, Flinney, Gannon, Cooper, um, Brett Angel. Um, I think Toddy were there. You know, towards the end, Nashi. They were. They're all. You know. With, the, the big problem that we had is that when when the club kind of changed and we're going through that transition period, we had to live up to these to these lads and and we weren't capable of doing that. I, I think I've said that previously. We we struggled to keep up with a, the the, play, the caliber of player that was there in them really successful championship years, um, especially when Brendan Elwood decided to sell the club and, and it was going in its in another direction. So 
Um, we were always trying to live up to that expectation. Um, but saying that as well, we, we, the, the, the managers that we worked under then, we they also brought in some really good players. Uh, you know, Ashley Williams went on to be captain of his country. Liam Dickinson went on to play, you know, have a really great career. Um Adam LaFondry, you yeah. know, some really, really top, and, top and players. Bill Kinson, he's, 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 Bill, he's Bill, funny of them, weren't they? Yeah, there were just so many, you know, and even though, we, it, you know, the, the club, again, was was up and down at that period, you know, we we had some really good players. We should have done a lot better, I think. Yeah. I really do think we should have had a, a, a done a lot better. And I've heard in the past as well that the team that Jim got promoted to League One through the playoffs with Liam, if they'd have kept hold of that team, I really do believe that they'd have gone on to be really successful. Yeah. I believe that, yeah. Right, guys, I'm going to have to love you and leave you because I'm busting for the toilet. <laughs> but Briggs, it's been emotional, mate. Yeah. Guys. Take care of yourself, buddy. Peace out. Well, Take care. Let's wrap, it, let's wrap it there, guys. It's been it's been a real pleasure having you on, Briggs. Um, no problem. We're definitely, we're definitely going to have you back if, if you join us. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's been a real treat. Matty, I feel like we've got touched in loads this week um, with, with regards to having a look at the, the, the game of last week and everything else, but it has been a bit of a big week, hasn't it? Yeah, fresh start as well. Fresh start, yeah. I think uh, next week will be the one. We'll next know more. We will. Yeah, We'll know more. We will know an infinite amount more next week. But listen, Briggsy and Matty, it has been an absolute treat having you on. And um, Podcast Wednesday, we'll, we'll speak to you again soon. Pleasure always, Chris. Chris. Matty, Matty, to see you, mate. Top man, mate. Take care of yourself, buddy. Yeah. Take care, pal. Miss you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. Bye, Chris. Thanks a lot, mate. See you, mate.